Okay, in this video we're going to look at building a Taylor polynomial whose center is somewhere other than zero. In the past couple of videos we we built and looked at different polynomials who every, all the action was centering around zero. There's a special kind of Taylor polynomial, more, more on that in a minute, but here we have a sine curve in red and a first degree Taylor polynomial centered at zero. Uh, you can see it approximating the sine of x there. If I bump it up to a 10th degree polynomial, you can see that it does a really good job of, of approximating sine, at least if we're in between around negative 4 to positive 4. But what if I wanted to know what is the sine of 8 radians? My 10th degree polynomial would be a horrible approximator for the sine of 8 radians. So there's a couple of ways to fix that. Uh, the first way I could fix it, you're probably thinking, is just build more terms, and you can certainly do that. And you could let this this 10th degree polynomial be a 50th degree polynomial and have it lay down perfectly over here. Uh, but that takes up valuable computing power if you were to try to program a computer to evaluate sine and cosine functions. Um, so what's a better way? What would be a better way, a more efficient way, of approximating the sine of 8? And if I could move the center, instead of centering everything at, at 0, I could center it somewhere closer to 8. Okay, what does that mean? That means that whatever I chose my center, it looks like, let's, let's, get, it, let's get it right at 5 here. I've centered it at 5. What does that mean? That means that the function value of my polynomial, the first derivative, the second derivative, and all the way up to the nth derivative are the same at x equals 5. And the more terms that I build, the the more this blue polynomial will lay down entirely on the sine curve. And you can see that if I wanted to know what the sine of 8 was, uh, this 10th degree polynomial looks like it would be spot on. Let's see what a third degree polynomial would do. Okay, third degree polynomial looks like it would be a little bit of an underestimate. So I could actually maybe go to a uh, center it at 6 or maybe, I don't know, let's get a little bit closer here. Anyway, you can see that the closer we get to 8, the more accurate we're going to be. And this is just with a third degree polynomial. Okay, Computers can do arithmetic very quickly. Uh, it's going to compute a third degree polynomial a whole lot quicker than it's going to compute a, a tenth degree polynomial or, or even bigger. Okay, so what's different about building a polynomial centered somewhere other than zero? than what we've been doing in the past couple of videos. So if you remember, quick review, a, a Taylor polynomial centered at zero has this general form right here. We have a, an nth degree polynomial of x and you can see that it just follows this pattern. Okay, so we did several examples like this. Um, in fact, this this type of Taylor polynomial has a special name for it, and that's called a Maclaurin polynomial. So a Maclaurin polynomial is simply a subset of a Taylor polynomial. It's just a Taylor polynomial whose center at zero. Okay, so it's a Taylor polynomial centered at zero. So what is a Taylor polynomial then? How do you how do you shift everything? And if you if you think back to your transformations back in a basic algebra class, if I wanted to take a function and shift it you know, two units to the right. Um, that form would be f of x plus 2 or minus 2, depending on if you wanted to shift it right or left. So if I look at what a Taylor polynomial centered at some other c is, whoops, sorry, let me move this up, then it takes on the following form. And you're going to notice just a couple of differences here differences uh, here. Um, sorry, I'm going to try to get the other one back on screen there. There you go. So this is the Maclaurin polynomial and this is our Taylor polynomial. Notice that the center up here was 0, the center down here is C. And instead of taking the first derivative, the second derivative, all the way out to the nth derivative of 0, we're now taking it at C. And then it's no longer x, x squared, x to the n. It's simply x minus c, x minus c squared, so on and so forth until we get out to our nth term. And this is shifting it. This is shifting our polynomial right or left, whatever our c value is. If it's if c is positive, 
our polynomial will get shifted to the right. And if c is negative, our polynomial is going to get shifted to the left. OK, so let's go ahead and look at an example here. Let's go ahead and find the third degree Taylor polynomial for the cosine of x. And we're going to center this polynomial at x equals pi over 2. So what do we need to know? Well, we need to know the first three derivatives of cosine. So the function is cosine. First derivative is negative sine. Second derivative is negative cosine. And finally, the third derivative is sine. Now, if I wanted a higher order polynomial, you will notice that at this point right here, my derivatives are just going to start to repeat. Um, the fourth derivative is going to be equal to the cosine of x, and it's going to repeat this pattern. So we're just going to do a third degree polynomial. Um, OK, so what else do we need to know? We need to know what are all those derivatives evaluated at pi over 2. So I've gone ahead and, and gotten all those derivatives. And now we're ready to build our Taylor polynomial. OK, so what does, what does the cosine of x approximately equal? If you think back to the, the generic form of a Taylor polynomial, you need f of your center. So what is f of your center? It's 0. And then we're going to add to it f prime, f prime of your center multiplied by x minus your center. plus the second derivative evaluated at the center, which is just 0. So it's going to wipe out that whole term. And then finally, the third derivative evaluated at the center times x minus the center cubed. And this is going to be over 3 factorial. So if we were to clean this up just a little bit, this is kind of ugly looking, but the cosine of x is approximately negative x minus pi over 2 plus x minus pi over 2 cubed over 6. And this is your third degree Taylor polynomial that will approximate the cosine of x. Okay, so let's see how we did. Let's see how good of an approximation that this polynomial we just found actually is. If we go to the graph and the red is my cosine function and the blue is my third degree Taylor polynomial centered right here at pi over 2, which is right around uh, 1.57. Um, don't worry about all this stuff here. You can look at it and sort of see that that this is my third degree polynomial. I kind of made it dynamic. It didn't work out exactly how I had hoped, but I just kind of fudged it. Down here, this column is my approximation. And this column is the actual value of the cosine of these values. So before, everything was centered around 0. And now, if we look at the values of my Taylor polynomial and then the values of my actual cosine function, you can see that around 0, we're, we're kind of inaccurate now. And that's because we're centered right over here at pi over 2. You can see we're really good right in through here. And then if we wanted to evaluate the cosine of 4 radians, it looks like my third degree polynomial would be off a little bit. OK? So to find a Taylor polynomial centered at any value other, other than 0, we simply defer to this right here. We simply defer to this little pattern right here. It's just like what we've been doing centered at 0, only this time we, we plug our center in here and we shift everything over by a factor of c. I hope that made sense to you. We'll see you around.